it. No worries. Yeah, we'll uh, figure this out. It's we, new we, cameras, we, new technology. New, we'll set that. Yeah, new cameras, what? new layout. We still testing things out. So oh, bear oh, with no us. worries. I, I made all bear this out. All this probably edited out. I'm gonna do that with a rough cut. So it's no worries. Oh no, leave it in. Leave it in. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welcome to the In and Out Podcast, man. The best podcast this side of the multiverse, bro. Woo! It's a new year. Woo! Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for all the support. Uh, we had X like crazy growth last year, and we know we want to roll to 1K this year. Probably may get it before the end of the year. We'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, I'm again. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. All the support. Uh, pretty sure my compatriots here have the same uh, sentiment as I do. So thank you guys very much. Um, thank you. Uh, Today we're gonna get a thousand in. views in a in a month. That's that's oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, we 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 hit all, uh, all kinds of records, and, and then we all went on break break for weeks. So so thank y'all for for staying with us. We really thank that. thank the graphic designer that made this uh this new look because it looks yeah this yeah. yeah. new look. Otis Otis working overtime. Otis working we gotta overtime. we gotta pat that nigga on the back. We gotta find him. I don't know what the and, you know, we're going to get into talk on one of, to me, I guess, maybe the best movie of last year. That's up for debate. We'll get into that for the live show. Ooh, okay. uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, we were very behind on this video, this and the Matrix review, which we're going to do uh, pretty soon after this. Because uh, of the holidays, we, we were near our equipment. We were family, so we were going to get the opportunity to. Today was not um, I had my shit. I'm just saying. Yeah, okay. Okay. We get it. He's, <laughs> he's an adult. This nigga's an adult. Uh, real quick, we'll get into our first impressions on this movie, and before we kind of break it down into you know the increments, uh, we know we know Craig, we know you missed the reviews. You've been demanding the reviews all the time. We won't break. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. Every every day, every day. <laughs> we got we got to get one in. Um, I'll kick this shit off because you know it's been a minute. I want to really talk my shit about this movie. This movie in particular to me was not just a movie. This is very similar to. In Avengers Infinity War, I believe, like an end game where it was like kind of a, it was an event where it was kind of a thing to where I feel like the ratings for this movie are gonna fluctuate over time because if it's one of those things where you just had to be there because everybody like the hype for this movie was so built up over I think over like two years, even when this movie was like leaked and announced and even thought about it, people were hyping up for it and making theories about it and breaking down every leak that came out. So easy to say the movie didn't disappoint for me personally. I enjoyed the movie. I enjoyed the set pieces. Uh, spoiler alert here. Spoiler alert here. If you haven't seen the movie, by now, we'll, we'll have it in the, in the, the actual thumbnail will say spoiler review. Yeah. Right. We'll have it in there. But if you haven't seen this movie by now, you just don't want to see it. It's been like four weeks, three weeks, right? You just don't want to see it by now. Uh, this movie featuring all three of the Spider Man and Garfield, Maguire, and Holland was nostalgia overload. I feel like for each person um, in this movie, it followed the tale of each generation of Spider-Man fans with the you know the older older people following the McGuire stuff and kind of that mid-generation with the um with the uh not Holland, oh my god, the Garfield, Andrew Garfield one. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, which surprisingly so, those weren't well received before. Everybody done changed their tune now. Now he, they want a whole trilogy from this man now. Like, oh my God, he was so amazing. I want a trilogy. I, I swear I was one of the, apparently everybody was one of the five people that said that these movies were good. Everybody thought they were good, apparently, well, I was say. Well, I, I, was I, not I, one of those I, I, I not. don't know if it was saying- I wasn't. Movies. I don't know if it was saying those movies are good as much as they're saying we appreciate like Andrew, Garfield Andrew Garfield and Garfield, his yeah. character and we want to see more of him. It's okay to not like it and change your mind later on. It's, it's people, it's okay to change your opinion. You don't. Mm -hmm. How yeah. like you're a human being, you can change your opinion over time. Yeah, you won't so, crucify thing, you. That, that movie. I mean, we, we've all seen Amazing Spider-Man two. We've all seen the, the thing yeah, about yeah, it yeah, is, yeah. is that Amazing Spider-Man two and some things about Amazing Spider-Man one are so bad that this movie literally retcons them outright. Like for example, the way that Jimmy Fox <laughs> <Soccer>. looks. Yeah, <laughs> it's, like, it's like yeah, I don't look that way no more. The whole Blue Man group nonsense. Right. Nah, nah, just nah. So it, it's it's, like, it's I think this movie did a good job of kind of like making. Making taking what was those lemons 
that the some of the other films threw at their nuts and rearranging them. For example, with the Green Goblin, the way the Green Goblin, the first thing that Norman Osborn does outside of attacking Spider-Man is he puts that helmet on the trash on the trash can symbolically and smashes it. It's like, yeah, that was a dumbass look. So there, there are a couple of things hey. they're making sure they did just now. And I know Dev has a massive soft spot for that, and that's fine. He's a young man, got a nice, nice beard, full beard. Hmm. But uh, but he's hey, not old. Like yeah, yeah, here's the first He was like what, like three when that movie dropped. So I mean, uh, maybe two and a half. Not yeah. It came out of when? When did it come out? Like oh, it's like old two. Was it old yeah. two? Yeah, I, was yes, I think so. Oh, so you were you weren't you were you were even three. You weren't even three. Yeah. Yeah, I was two years old. I was literally two years old. Like, it was, yeah. yeah. Um. I, I like the I like the little Oni mask type deal he had on. I'm kind of glad they kind of they gave him a more hobgoblin look with the little robe on his head or whatever. Da, da, da. Um, <laughs> you, it, it, it literally was like a robe because you. It, it looked like they were trying to give him like the hobgoblin look with the little hood. Yeah, he was, he was definitely supposed to be hobgoblin. Like, I, right, yeah, yeah that's the yeah. I still remember that person like took a, took a Hugh Hefner robe and put it on just I, their head. That was one of the few things I actually didn't like because he looked stupid as shit with that on, right? It's like, ain't well, nobody what was... coming to see you, Otis. Hey, there oh, there yeah. it is. That was a good one. 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 That's it right. That's it right right there. Hey, but yeah, that hey. looks stupid as fuck, right? Like, why? <laughs> why did they, yeah. like, we're just going to put this thing around his head and he's the hobgoblin now. Yeah, the family did it. Like, there, who there, thought that was the good? Like, who thought that was good? There is a why. Who there is a massive, like, even in our reality, why would a person put a tattered you know, the, as far as actual practicality, it makes no sense. But from the standpoint of trying to replicate the look and it's, it's I get it. It's I get, yeah, yeah, I get what they're members can put on bandanas and shit. We can, we can, we can. Oh yeah, no, I, I liked it. I thought it was good. I mean, I, cause I hate, I hate it. I got, I can't tell you how much I hated the original look that Willem Dafoe, not William, Willem, Willem. Dafoe. Willem and Dafoe. Yeah. It was, uh, and I, I'm sure y'all have seen. We'll probably bring it up here. The, the actual original way they tried to design the for the Green Goblin to look in the film, um, it was it was a very different kind of thing. It was a much more complex kind of a mask. But I thought it was cool what they ended up with that whole Power Rangers thing. I was like, come on. Yeah. Uh, Let's get into our favorite parts of this movie. That fight scene, my boy. He hit this nigga Spider Man with the Batista bomb through the three floor. Oh, yeah. You know everybody that talked oh, about it. Yeah. I oh, I yeah. swear to God, I swear I'm in a theater, and you guys know my boy Jeffrey. Jeffrey is one of the biggest WWE fans I have ever met. Probably the biggest in my life. And this thing does not miss any pay per view, any SmackDown Raw. He doesn't miss that shit. And when I went to him, I'm like, bro, did they do that verbatim? Like they did the same, the exact choreography of a spine buster. I'm like, who did they have choreography? Like choreographed these fights, and I'm yeah. And this man, William Willem Dafoe, did his stunts. So this 66 year old mm -hmm. man 66. picked up this dude and spy busted this man through the floor. Like, yo, like, and he did it in sets. Like, it wasn't just like all no, floors at once. Nah, he was I like, quick. boom, like, are uh, you trying to get away? Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> like, it was not quick. All the way down to the ground floor. Like that hurt. Fair Back enough. to this uh, man getting hit with a WWE finisher is like, did your theater go crazy when that happened? Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. I swear, I swear he did that shit. I heard somebody in the back just, boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. I was <laughs> like, yo, <laughs> yeah, because it was there were a, there were like a couple just like yo moments in this movie where you just stopped and just like, damn. And that's what I mean by like the events. I've only ever seen this in Marvel movies where like something happens and the entire theater reacts to right. what just happened right. on the screen. Mm -hmm. it's, it's literally an event, like a, almost like a live performance, but it's not live. That's why when it comes to rating these movies, which we'll get into the ratings in a minute, um, we gotta, I gotta rate these differently. I gotta like make sure I look at it as a film and not as an event. Cause I'm biased to tell like, if I'm at a live show and hear a song, I'm gonna look at it a lot differently than if I just heard it on a recording in my room somewhere. So but can you be biased? Is there a, a uh, I forgot who once said it, but there's no such thing as true object, true, true objectivity, objectivity when it comes to uh, with to art. And right. you know, no matter what Martin Scorsese might say, these movies essentially are still art. So right. you don't have to worry about too much about like, oh, I need to make sure I look at this through my uh, academic lens. No, you can be yourself. Whatever you felt, that you felt. Right. Just random, random question. 
do do Michael Bay movies count as art? No. Like, uh, and again, we need to have this policy firm in here that we cannot say that name ever again, uh, ever. Again. So to get uh, more in depth, movies. What I already talked about my favorite moment in that fight scene in particular. What were you guys' favorite moments? And uh, we'll start with Lelouch over here to the left of me. My my favorite moment was a little bit more nuanced. It wasn't uh, necessarily like something that you super saw on screen. It was more so what was going on around. And uh, it was when Doctor Strange completely lost control of the spell at the end, and you saw all the Spider-Man ki- characters from everywhere in like uh, like behind a, a, a veil essentially. Right. So I was I had so much fun just trying to like oh that's Craven that's Rhino yeah, so that's, that's you know I, I, yeah. I had a lot uh, I had a lot of fun doing that so that was my favorite part. It's like right ooh on. ah it's like yeah <laughs> man, I grew up on Spider Man Spider Man was like my first like comic anything that I really followed so he's a gateway yeah. he's a, he's definitely yeah. a gateway for most people lots of people yeah right. this brought everybody's inner child for sure. Um, right. Mr. Mr. King of the comic, what about you? What about yourself? Yeah, man, for me, it was actually kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. It was at the end, near the very end, when Peter, after, uh, like, a, like about a minute after Otis's part, when Peter goes to see MJ working her her job at the donut shop, and he has the letter. He's worked up this letter. I'm not sure how long he's, he's practiced working on it to actually make sure he can actually reintroduce himself to the love of his life. And he goes there and he sees her and she wipes her hair back and he sees the bandage and he's getting ready to tell her, you know, who he is. And he realizes that, oh, having her around me is genuinely dangerous to her. And he slides the letter back in his pocket and just walks away. Like, I, like that's the most honorable, noble thing we've seen Spider-Man do it. I don't know how long. And it feels very Spider-Man-esque. And I remember in the theater, like my, I heard my friends sniffling on the side of me and everything. I was like, I, and I, got, I got choked up, man. I got choked up. I got choked up. So that for me is the, uh, mm-hmm. is my favorite part. I think, um, yeah, that was a beautiful way, like, to show his growth and his like, maturity. And like, I can't have this because this is gonna hurt the people I love. So let me just let them go so they're safe. Right. That I mean, whole that's, that's what that scene was. I thought that was like the contract ending and him going back to Sony and they're continuing with the MCU. I thought that's what that was. That's not it. That's not it. That was well, it. Hit, hit, hit that. Uh, hit that GIF. Hit that GIF. <laughs> right now. Ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Yes. And so you're saying the uh, dev, well, uh, I guess, try to get back on track. You were saying that your favorite moment is when the Green Goblin or Norman Osborn kept slamming him down through the every floor in the. Well, not that, that was, though. Not that exact moment, but that little sequence of him, his Goblin side, slowly taking back over. Oh yeah, yeah. See, yeah. which and, and the spider sense going off too. You can't get that. Oh, was that dope. was as he's, that as was he's walking around the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruh. That use a spider sense in a way I don't think has been used before. Maybe no. I mean there's like a particular comic I'm not aware of where it wasn't just like a reflex thing where it was like he used it almost like a meter to be like, all right, something's not right, right here. I'm gonna use this like a damn um like a Geiger Geiger counter, counter. And like Geiger counter and kind of like what's about to explode or what's nuclear in this room. Mm-hmm. And he like pieced his way over to oh no I'm about to do some fuck shit. And it like put that yeah. shit over the room. It, it was literally like ESP almost. Like he kind of like it, it right. he basically was able to like just sense evil uh, in a grander way than he ever had before. And I, I think I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I don't think we've seen Tom Holland Spider Man use his spider sense that much. Really, we've obviously yeah, because like, like you know, it started off as the the Peter Tingle, and then now right, it's upgraded yeah. to the Spider Sense now. Right. So which, yeah, he had to, right. Which yeah, me and Otis right. had a mini debate on this a while ago about. I feel like this kind of goes towards my theory of them making the spider sense uh, a magical type deal like they did in the comics in the spider-verse comics in which for people that don't know in the comics they explain the spider sense as being a interdimensional like web connection that all the spider-men share and whenever there's a spider whenever spider-men are near each other it gets stronger because you're in more proximity of them which right. to me and my was so the explanation of why well no one knows he wasn't even around in those spider man at that point well they, they, were in the the, but they were in the universe in the universe because we, we never saw him using it up like like that to that point like a meteor until the all in that same universe which maybe i'm wrong and maybe it's different at the later on when they go into the, the sony verse movies we'll see but it feels like they're building towards the spider verse in the live action stuff and if they're going to take connections from the comics i think that'll be the number one thing they take because it's it connects all the Spider-Men in a way that you don't really see in anything else. 
as far as yeah. live live action and animated stuff. Hmm. Well, well, part of it. I mean, you could definitely be right there. But one thing you have to, we have to all admit, it, it, it is fact, is that this is the first Spider-Man. Tom Holland Spider-Man is the first one to deal in the world with with magic, with acknowledged magic. Uh, mm-hmm. Toby and Andrew didn't have to deal with that kind of stuff. So if you, if we are going with the idea that, that magic is part of this reality, that's a that's a big thing. We have to acknowledge now also that we're saying officially that the Sam Raimi trilogy and the uh, Mark Webb. Uh, twosome those films are officially mcu canon because mm-hmm. andrew garfield and toby mm-hmm. wire are in this movie talking about their events from those lives so it's just to think that all these things would happen is mind shattering it's just crazy mm-hmm. you know it's just wow well, didn't they confirm there being a doctor strange in the toby Maguire stuff in that Did one they? little quick scene with Jonah Jameson, where he's talking about they're coming up with names for Spider Man. Oh, did they, and they say, say Doctor Strange? He's like, no, that's taken already. Rock. Science Squid? Crap. Doctor Strange. That's pretty good. But it's taken. Yeah, that's the thing. We'll see. There's a there's a lot of stuff. This this movie opened up the door for a lot of different concepts to be open, which I, I like this new phase of Marvel because it kind of gives it more way to the nerd that mm-hmm. read the comics because now they give us a movie and there's like a million different comic runs and one-offs and spin-offs that they could take from and now we get to go through the archive of stuff that we love that made us fans of this character in the comics. That's, that's interesting that you mentioned that because it kind of is, it, yeah, definitely they are cherry picking directly from the lore that fans enjoy. But there was a question that Otis asked me, yes, or me, I think it was me and James, uh, a buddy of ours, James, a few nights ago, where he said, what is mainstream these days? And we couldn't really give him a definitive answer. We pretty much just said streaming. But it's kind of the idea, like you said, casual fans, casual you know viewers of the Spider-Man films. Spider-Man's been around for 20 years on the big screen. He's had so many iterations, so many films. I don't even know if he is casual anymore. I mean, we were able to do two Spider-Verse movies, and they were wildly popular and very well done. Mm-hmm. Can you be a casual fan and appreciate those movies? I don't know if you can. I don't know if the the completely casual fan fully understands how the Spider-Verse works in either instance, if I'm being completely real. Not, sure. uh, not uh, throwing anybody on the bus, but like, I just think they understand like, oh, it's a lot of Spider-Man out there and they came together to do Spider-Man stuff. Right, but I think the way they they made it palatable enough that you don't have to completely understand all the science of how these things work. It's the same, it's what I call the flux capacitor, the flux capacitor principle. Marty McFly has no idea how all these thermodynamics work, but Doc Brown just shows him he's like, he here, it's this. It's like, okay, we're on board. It's the same thing with Spider-Man and Spider-Verse and Doctor Strange with all kinds of craziness, multiverses. It's pretty much like, yo, there are, there's a, a vast world of Spider-Man out there. You're one of them. Okay, cool, let's go. And just for future reference, I can't speak for these two, but I am in no way an expert on, I'll let, if I feel like I'm an expert on something, I'll let y'all know. But I'm saying this from, I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself a casual, but I'm like in the I'm like here's a casual. I'm at least a couple tiers above that for the fact I kind of have a background on the yeah. origins of these things. But you're legit. If you if you're I'm legit. wrong on something, don't go back to like a Spider-Man issue from like 20 years ago and pay like with two pages and be like you're wrong. I'm like I won't care. I really don't. I, I swear <laughs> to God, I don't. I swear to God, I won't. We, we, let's try to say something negative about this movie so we're not just giving it the flower. Is there anything? Oh, I, I got no, a negative thing. Yeah, that's yeah, okay. Otis is sitting, sitting right there. Otis is uh-huh. literally sitting right yeah. there. <laughs> I think I have to go. Um, my biggest gripe against this movie is that they did not build up enough tension throughout it. Like, the, the, the whole, at least for at least to me, at least to me, and I, I'm gonna tell you what. Okay. The most intense moment in this entire movie was P- me thinking like, oh, Peter's gonna kill the Green Goblin. He's gonna kill him, isn't he? He's gonna, like, that was the only time I was like, oh, on the edge of my seat. Everything else like, yeah, Peter got it. Yeah, the other Peter got it. Now the other Peter got it. I-, I was never really like, oh, this could go wrong. Like, oh, Dr. Strange's spell can just really just mess. Yeah, he got it. They got it. Did you originally think they all find a way so that Peter can go back to his status quo? 
And by that, I mean going back to having a life with MJ, going back to having a life with uh, maybe Aunt May or what have you, going back to somewhat of a square one where no one in the world knew who he was. He was able to be Spider-Man. He was happy with his family and friends. Did you think that was going to happen? I I had no idea that was going to happen. And... But I wouldn't call that a tension moment. That's right. uh, no. I mean, I was like, oh wow, like I, I didn't see that coming. I'll definitely no, it's not tension. That I didn't. But it, 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 this movie never felt like, like oh, this this could go wrong. Like this this, it, it was never that feeling to me. It never it never raised that feeling. Well, I guess that's what I mean is that went wrong. It's like kind of essentially, but in the end, this is the worst case scenario. You you expect on some level, especially in these Disney this Disney. You know, oeuvre of films involving the MCU, things tend to find, except for in, uh, Avengers uh, Infinity War, things tend to find a way to go back to a happy medium. In this movie, it said, nah, not, not this time. And this time, essentially, you'll survive and the world will go on, but a lot of things are gone. Your, your, your personal world, Peter, is fucked. Uh, yeah, happy New Year! So, I mean, and that literally happened. You see him swinging by a Christmas tree when that happened. I agree with Otis to an extent as far as the tension. I felt like he could have, which is tough to build tension throughout a two-hour movie. I'll give him that. And within that, I'm just that's hard. I don't know how you write that much tension into a movie. Um, but I will, I will say there's You're not right, the same volume as tension. But when there was tension, there was a lot of it. Like again, like the Goblin moment when he was gonna try to kill him again. Really, all the, all the tension was when, in Goblin moments, honestly. I mm-hmm. felt like all, he was both, the only intense part of this movie. Hey. Like, the only oh. part. It was just like, oh, whoa, he was intense. Whoa. He was yeah. intense. He did his job. He showed up to work. He came to work. And Jamie Foxx felt like a joke. Lizard was literally a joke. Sandman didn't know what he was. Like, he was a CGI. Willem was just like, I'm on it. Let's do it. Like he was, yeah. and he was the only one that brought that energy to me, and I needed that from everybody. Hey, I, but, I, but I did like Doc. Doc Ock was a good character. I mean, he did say <laughs> the power of the palm. He, he was the canceled of... out before it even like he was already a good guy. Yeah, he was knocked out. He was knocked out at that. But that yeah. first fight was was good. But I think what I mean is like, he's a good character. I mean, he was. It was interesting to see Alpha Molina. Alpha Molina came to work. I think outside of Doc, of uh, Green Goblin, Alpha Molina has the most lines and does the most has the most interaction with uh, both Peters. With, Tony yeah. McGuire and, and Tom Holland. Yes, you know he's going to make that turn, that, that turn uh, to to a face to call it wrestling pretty soon. Of course, it's going to happen. But it was just interesting to see a person, and they, and they made sure the, the audience understood that this was a good person corrupted by his machine as opposed to uh, Green Goblin, who is a person that had multiple personality disorder, and he's corrupted by himself in a sense. So, I yeah, it wasn't surprising, but it was engage, entertaining at least. Break this down into like three terms because you know I'm a fat boy and I love food. Um, the villains of this movie, we have the two main dishes in Doc Ock and uh, Green Goblin. Other characters were garnishes and kind of just like there to support it, mostly because in their movies they weren't written very well. So you, I, I don't even know how you go into writing them in a better way in this movie. We have to focus on so many other characters. Right. So I'm not as mad about them being the supporting roles. Like I think they did their job mm-hmm. in just being there for fighting and being there to entertain. And when it came to Doc Ock, it's hard to do as much with him because in Spider-Man 2, he had his full circle arc, like back to the point to where he was a good guy then. So he got his full circle thing. Green Goblin was the only one where like they kind of just he kind of just died. He didn't really get any kind of redemption arc or any kind of full circle thing. It was I know who you are, we fight, I kill you, and I move along to somebody else. I will say, but even though the supporting cast in Sandman, especially Jamie Foxx, I know I fuck with my boy Jamie Heavy, one of the most talented people in the industry. Um, I think that they did a good job in their role. Like you're there to relieve tension, you're there to help promote the plot along, and they're just look cool and Jamie Foxx's Electro looked badass to me. I'm like, came through yeah. this right now. And that was, I, Jamie Foxx had the best line of this entire movie. Yeah, like, my so like Miles. Uh, Chef, I do that. I do the leg. Yeah, you know, right, right. Exactly. Right. My audience is <laughs> busting out. My audience is busting out laughing. I get what you're saying, Oh, I definitely do that. As far as a character that's fleshed out and well rounded, of course, Green Goblin's at the top of the rung. But again, think about this. What was one of the biggest gripes that was levied against, uh, leveled, I'm sorry, leveled against Spider-Man 3 back in the day? 
Too many characters. Too many characters ruined the movie. Too many villains. It came, in, it came a clustered mess. This movie has three heroes and five villains. And of course, there's a whole bunch of spinning plates because somehow yeah, they make it work. six. Five. Six, six, you you six. super missed the opportunity. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Six. I guess like, it brought like, Michael Keaton that? or something. Yeah. But, he was but in they, the movie. He was there. Honestly, they could, well, I mean, we didn't see Michael Keaton, but. But yeah, you saw him. He's at the beginning of the movie. Michael Keaton? Was? Whoa, they. Yeah, hold on. Have like, yeah. you seen the trailer for Morpheus? Yeah, Morbius. 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 Uh, Morbius. He's in that trailer. That's 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 next. That's next. Uh... That's 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 next. <laughs> that's next review. That's we'll yeah. Morbius. That. But where, where's Michael Keaton though? Where is Michael Keaton? Though? I don't know. Yeah, he's, he's, he's in jail. jail. He's in jail. He's in jail. Like, they, they literally showed him in jail. In like, this movie? At the beginning. In this movie. The movie together. Oh, he was there for the the um the questioning. And they questioned yeah. the. the they, they don't go to jail though. They go to a police station for that. <laughs> the, the vulture was already by this point. This is years later. He's already yeah. in the pit. Peter Parker he was, was questioned he was, at a. He, at a he, he's probably not in a regular station. prison though. He's, he's like probably in a superhero oh prison. God. It was. It was before even that. It was like it was kind of early. Fair. I don't remember where. So it was, the movie but opens. It sure movie opens literally the where the last movie ended with Mysterio oh, pretty much revealing right. who he is. Goes back and to his then, home. Matt Murdock. Oh, Matt Murdock is there. Hey. The brick. We have to be, we'll talk about that too. But I'm, yeah. what I'm saying is, you're saying it's at the beginning. I'm trying to figure out what part in the beginning Michael Keaton could possibly be shown at. Or just a different version of him in the Morbius movie? Because they show him you know, in that, like, what's up? Wait, Michael Keaton's him. in Morbius? Yeah, yeah in, the trailer, in the trailer, they the trailer, have him. Yeah, right. you're right, you're right, you're right. You're yeah, he's like, what's up, dog? I'm just like, the fuck? <laughs> it's definitely not the culture. It's not I think I, I think I might be mistaken. The Morbius trailer, seen him there. For oh, okay. okay. And the No Way Home trailer. But I like how like, like, so we, we got to cover back to, to Matt. We got to swing him back yeah. to Matt Murdock. But then also the idea that, oh, yeah, the vet. So we can have our kicking needed too. Now we actually have the symbiote is available somewhere in this bar away from Eddie Brock. There for mm -hmm. all again. We can, this movie did another job of like getting rid of all that filth. So the, those Venom movies, they're not part of this anymore. You guess we can have a new, brand new Venom. I, I think that's what really happened. I think that's how we got the ending of this No Way Home movie. MCU was like, "Oh, Venom two, we can't, we can't have that here. We can't have that." Here. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they saw Woody Harrelson's yeah. hair. They saw all of his hair. I said, that, "Yes, that's, 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 that's a no yes. go." That's a no go. It's like we'll fix that later on. We already fixed Spider Man. We'll fix that later. <laughs> yeah, we'll fix that we'll too. Fix I have a newfound level of respect for Marvel writers because the pressure you have on you to make these franchises that have not only are very well woven into nostalgia with this early Spider-Man stuff, but you're like one of the you're the most anticipated movies when they drop and they're announced. And for you, you have all the pressure not to flop. Like you have to have this movie be written well, and if you don't, you gonna catch hell about it. For like it's gonna be the most blown up. Like when you win and you up, you're up. But when you're down, boy, people will step on your neck and kick you while you're down. Yeah. I'm like kudos to y'all as writers because you got pressure on you to make everything work and then to make everything work canon wise because you're gonna have people that are break down and screw down every individual little thing that you do. Because there's sure. there's no movie without a plot hole somewhere. Oh, and no, for the fact you have millions and billions of people that are gonna break down every individual thing you do and look for a plot hole. Mm -hmm. And you find like maybe three in a two-hour movie. I'm like, hey, bro, you did an amazing job. You did no, an amazing nice job. I just want to thank Charlie for acknowledging that. Uh, as y'all see my name there, King of the Comics. That's not because I know the most about comics. No, no. It's because I literally make comic books. And I write them and create them. And that is some hard shit. And people think, oh, you just you just slap some uh, words on, it, on on some funny pages. No, it takes time and planning and effort. And funny what I thing. do is nothing compared to what these dudes do. Uh, and, and women too, I mean, everyone, all genders. But it's uh, so I so yes, thank you for acknowledging that. And I'm glad. I and mean, they did. They had a lot of oh my God. Could you imagine? Could y'all imagine starting at square one and having to somehow find a way to make this happen? Rock. How, how did Aunt May have a 45 minute conversation before she died? Yeah, that like, was did, that was. Well, I'm was trying to figure out. No blood was like like yeah. no blood was flowing. Like yeah. 
Well, yeah, I think she I, died I think from it was like a, a contusion, right? From like no, she, she died from getting pierced by the glider. That's what she, she died from. Yeah, yeah, but it was. It was but I think I think what but, 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 but what I think it may have actually been is actually adrenaline. Like if you it's happened before where it happens to lots of people where you you do get a, a pretty severe injury and the adrenaline keeps you where you keep on going and having a conversation or talking whatnot and then you realize it. Yeah. Now her, her standing up, her actually standing up upright and and moving is like oh that's a bit that's a bit. And Peter it's, had his hand on her back. Like you didn't notice the blood or something. Hey, my boy. Hey, hey. Oh, did you tore your ACL? You know, you you know where it felt a lot worse after the fact. You tore it twice. I'm freaking you tore it. God oh, damn. ACL you know, and ACL and <laughs> anyway, back on topic. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You, topics, topics, you, topics. you've torn. You've torn that. You've seen like people like Kobe tear his Achilles and walk off court. People, you're able to do shit like that because that adrenaline is going so hard. Yeah, and if like the tendon is keeping your leg up and making you walk and move, you can bypass at the walk. I can see her easily like talking a little bit while she's on the ground before she passes away. Like what Otis right. said, they had like, you see her is, like standing while yeah. literally bleeding to death. Like that was that was <laughs> that was yeah that was. A I mean, it, it, it didn't look like it was like a spurting blood. It looked like it was like a, she was losing blood slowly from the period. I, w- I was surprised to see her get up at all because I was that that looked like legit like. Bro, it like, like, broke her Bill back. Bill Goldberg bro. slash like Junior. That South. was, that was the worst thing. Hit. The worst hit in Remember the Titans. That was yeah, that was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> I I mean, I, like the fact that Denzel Washington and suck on 1994. But yeah, it's like that. That was a, a legit like hit. Because like, also it wasn't just a hit. It like came. It busted through the like the front window, mm-hmm. like with all that. Like and, th- and that window was like plexiglass. That was thick ass glass. And it busted through. Hit her. And I, no offense, Mercy Tomei is not young. So her body can't hit that, can't take that much damage. She ain't young, but she bad, though, boy. Hold no, on. she bad. She bad. No, that's another she thing. Bad. Don't, don't get me wrong. Please don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm begging not to get me wrong. But it was like, that was a legit hit. And she got back up like, hey, hey, hey. Boy, I heard. She was like, Mike Tyson. I, was like, I think I broke my back. Spinal. <laughs> I broke my back. What do you mean by that? You my broke back, back is broken. What, a, a vertebrae or, or well, what portion? Spinal. <laughs> I know, <laughs> bro. Cause her, I was like, "How are you alive?" I thought she died on the spot. She should. Yeah, that's what I thought. She too. should have. I'm like, did you get bit I, by the spider too, yeah. or what the fuck? How right. did this shit happen? Right. She got hit by that, and I think didn't after she got hit by that, then the Green Goblin flew in again and threw a bomb. Yeah. And Peter, like Peter, like tapped the bomb away, but he didn't really like grab it and throw it away. He kind of tapped it away. So, mm-hmm. man, so I. <laughs> I may had a cave in right near her face, then got hit like a like a, by a linebacker in the back, then got blowed up in the face, then stood up. Surprise! Mm-hmm. That, and so I, I had a conversation. Had, had, a, had a full a conversation about, about politics. And dropped the classic line: "With great power comes great responsibility." Yeah, it, it, she oh, said, "You she can't right. kill me." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, start getting towards wrapping it up. Um, again, this movie was uh, an event. This was this movie meant a lot to me as a fan of Spider-Man. Like you guys said, it came out when I was damn near infancy, so I grew up with those Raimi movies shaking my nerddom growing up and getting me into partially responsible for getting me into the nerd, nerd culture I love today. So I want to thank the writers, anybody that was involved in the making of this movie because it was an amazing film. It meant a lot to me and to multiple generations of Spider-Man fans. Um, and it was just done well. I don't have a lot of negatives about this movie. There are like things you can find if you're over analyzing it or like critiquing it, but there's not a lot for me personally. So thank you guys for an amazing experience, an amazing good time and a dark time for me, but I, I loved it, man. It was great. This is easily like not even, it's, it's not even something that you have to think about. This is by margins, leaps and bounds, the best Spider-Man movie ever. It's so good that it actually makes the other movies better by fixing it, a it lot of the does. things that, <laughs> that they did wrong does. in those, so. Yeah, it, it literally does. Great not even, not, not only that, but also it makes you want, because the people didn't, both earlier iterations, uh, Spider-Man 3 and Amazing Spider-Man 2, people were like, ugh, they were kind of walked away from the theaters upset. But this movie was so good, it made people want to have those those film series continue. That's how mm. good it was. They made people want to see more of these characters and their worlds. And Andrew Garfield, I think, was it you, Dev, who predicted the idea that he would he would get his uh his oh yes yeah. he was he was obviously gonna say the black girl like, oh, the redemption art hey redemption hey art. I, I didn't call that shit didn't I I called that yeah, shit didn't I, 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 I hey 
Hey, yeah. I was like, hey, boy, I'm Nostradamus out this bitch. Hold yeah. on, no, boy. Yeah, it was pretty shit. honest. It was pretty honest. I called that shit. Well, I mean, yeah. Hey, yeah, was... Otis, let me have some shit. Oh, yeah, I mean, him. But it was odd. Ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. You can have to do it in his movie. He's going to get the chance here. Like, that's that's just like one plus one equals two. So, But but all that to say, I was it was fun to see. Because I mean, literally fun to see the three of them together. When it, actually, when, when as soon as Andrew Garfield showed up in my crowd, in my audience, my theater, everyone knew he was gonna show up. But he shows up first. When they did a little circle thing, he pops up. People, were, oh my god, people! Were, I heard people gasping and clapping and everything. It was a, it was a fun time. And then when, he, when he's holding uh, Zendaya or Zendaya or, or, or Charlie's wife in his hands, and he has a, he's tearing up. People in the audience are tearing up too. So it's like this is a great moment. And actually, the, my, my, actually, my favorite part about Andrew Garfield wasn't that. It was actually when he was actually being Spider Man. Andrew Garfield have more pizzazz as Spider-Man than, than other two oh, yeah. ever did. Oh, yeah. A few of them are jumping off the um, Statue of Liberty to go out and swing and fight against them. He would say, woohoo, did a backflip. The other two were quiet. It's like, I, that's what I want to see. I want to see Spider-Man actually having fun being Spider-Man. I will say this to, to Zill, uh, you know, because we, 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 I talk shit about him in a, in a post. You sure? Andrew Garfield is the best under the mask. Like, in, in mask, he is you. the best. Yeah. The best yeah. Peter Parker is Tom Holland. Yeah, the best Peter. Part. Yes. Uh, so here, here's that's such a yeah, it's a complicated issue. And Zell's always wrong. But what I will say is that the actual in my favorite, my I would say overall, Garfield is probably the single best Spider-Man in, in Spider-Man Two, probably. But my favorite portrayal of Spider-Man on this on the big screen is actually probably like the Civil War or the Infinity War, yes. where you get to see him just like the way he makes those jokes as far as like a teenager in this big group ensemble. The quips are fun, and and for whatever reason, Tom Holland didn't have those quips. In his own trilogy, he barely, you know, he says he bases anything in his own trilogy. Because I don't know why. the Marvel writers are better than the Sony ones, we know this. I know. Yeah. Again, uh, this is an amazing movie. Um, thank you, you guys. Get the you gotta get the ratings. Oh, yeah, I'm about to forget yeah, about the ratings. important part of this movie. Uh, for me personally, this movie to me was a perfect 10 out of 10 for me. I, I won't stray from giving it a perfect rating. About you, uh, Otis, what are you, what's your rating? What are you rating inside of it? Uh, this is a MCU 12, which is an actual eight. <laughs> I don't even know how his math works. It's like the metric system meets dog year. So it's uh, a 10. It's a 10. It's an eight. Because <laughs> yeah, the, the middle is a 10. Yeah, we, uh, know, we know how this race. Right. My, my original score is an 8.5. And then I saw it a second time with the niece and nephews. Um, and I was like, you know what? I actually appreciate it. There was one thing I, I had an issue with before. I was like, how is it? Or why is it that in order to fix the spell, they had to have Spider-Man forget, er, have everyone forget Spider-Man or that Tom Holland was Spider-Man. But then actually the second time I realized what the actual was happening there. I thought they were trying to redo the same original spell, which wasn't the case. So since that plot hole was remedied, I was like, you know what, that's better. I'll give it a nine. The thing I brought up in the non-spoiler review as far as char characters acting out of character was Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange should have had enough Ooh, sense to realize He's like, what are you doing, dude? Even Wan's like, wait a minute, what are you doing? And then he leaves. It's like, wait, what are, what are both of y'all doing? What are Wan and Doctor Strange? The Sorcerer Supremes, plural, Dev. What are they doing letting this madness happen run rampant? Like, that's insane. Well, Sorcerer Supreme, I mean, he lost his job. No, you know, Wan was, Wan was Sorcerer Supreme. Wan was, and yeah. obviously, yeah. Doctor Strange was past Sorcerer Supreme. So they were yeah. Sorcerer Supremes at the different era. So it's yeah. like, y'all should have known a whole lot better than to do something this wild. So that's why I was kind of like, this is that's, that's a bit much. But other than that, that's why I spent one point off is for that nonsense. Other than that, I loved it pieces. So that was a great time. Uh, I saw Otis crying during it, so it's it's good. It's just good. Crying. Well, you know he's from Chicago. They don't, they don't, he, he cries bullets. So they're gonna cry tears. <laughs> oh, <fuck>. Stop. <laughs> Stop. He can sneeze his gunpowder. You didn't have booger. <laughs> <laughs> this this has been an amazing week. Uh, I think on this side with a similar to another thing we all have. I love it. And thank good you guys for tuning in. Moving, this has moving. been another episode of the In and Out podcast, along with a return for the new year. Thank you guys for tuning in and continue to tune in for what we have coming up. Thank you. Woo! Stay your ass at home, Kirsten Dunst. <laughs>